Hi, I'm Molly, and in this new series of videos, we'll be taking an in-depth look at some of the processing options available on all quantum consoles. What they do, how they sound, and where they might come in useful. Today, we're starting with the mustard optical compressor, the purple one. The use of optical compressors dates back to the early 1960s, and over the years, there's been a wide range of hardware units from many manufacturers. I'm sure you're all familiar with the industry standard models, the Teletronics LA2A and 3A, the TubeTech CL1B, and there are many plugin emulations of these units, again, from many software developers. Maybe you have your go-to plugin when you need optical compression. But if you're mixing on a quantum console, we provide native onboard low latency processing in the form of mustard processing. And one of the mustard options is an optical compressor delivering all the characteristics of optical compression and built right into the channels. But first, how do optical compressors work? An optical compressor works by sending the side chain signal through a light element, like a filament bulb, for example. The louder the signal, the brighter the light shines. This light source is pointed at an LDR, a light dependent resistor which, as its name suggests, has a variable resistance that depends on the amount of light being exposed to it. The more light, the lower the resistance. This resistance then controls the amount of compression. So the louder the signal, the lower the resistance, and the more compression that occurs. One of the defining characteristics of optical compressors are the non-linear attack and release shapes. You can think of it like a light bulb being switched off. When you turn off the light, immediately it drops down, but the filament will carry on glowing and slowly fade. The time it takes to fade is dependent on how bright the light was before you turned it off and how long it was on for. In the context of an optical compressor release shape, it has two stages. It will first drop down quickly and then gradually reduce over time. In general, optical compressors have a slower attack time so won't affect fast transients. What this means in terms of sound is that it won't remove transients from sources like drums. The mustard optical compressor is a quite a transparent compressor, so it doesn't colour the sound significantly, just primarily controlled level. This is because after the maximum amount of gain reduction has occurred, the signal becomes linear again. This will result in much more natural sounding compression as there's a limit to the amount of gain reduction that can be achieved. Let's take a quick look at the controls before having a listen. The mix control, available on all mustard compressors, changes the balance between the dry, uncompressed signal and the compressed signal, allowing you to do things like parallel compression without taking up more of your channel or bus count. Threshold is the level of the incoming signal at which the compressor starts to kick in. Attack and recovery control the speed that the compressor starts and stops acting on the signal once the threshold is passed, which can be switched between slow, medium and fast. The ratio is how much the signal is compressed by once your signal exceeds the threshold. Essentially, how aggressive the compression is when you hit the threshold. The gain control is the post-compression makeup gain and the sidechain filters control the bandwidth of the signal triggering the compression. This is useful for if you only want information in a particular frequency band to trigger the compressor. You can also set the sidechain input to be different to the input signal. This is done by touching the sidechain source, selecting a signal, and then turning it on. Different compressor characteristics suit different sources, and the optical compressor is no exception. Generally, an optical compressor is best for inputs that don't have short, sharp transients. Things like vocals, guitars, bass guitars, and sometimes for mastering. The reaction of the LDR to the light source produces a slow, smooth compression that isn't easily achieved with other compressor types. 
Think of it a bit like a peak versus RMS metering. RMS essentially averages the signal, and this is a good way to visualise the reaction of the opto that results in smooth compression characteristics. Now, let's have a listen to what our mustard optical compressor sounds like. If you've got some good quality headphones or in-ears, now's the time to plug them in so you can really hear the effect. I've got a loop of acoustic guitar here. There is some slight processing on it already just to clean it up a bit. But notice how without any compression on, the dynamics vary quite a lot. Let's have a listen. And now with the Opto compressor. Notice how it's smoothed the overall level. Let's toggle it off and on again a few times to hear the difference. Now I'm going to turn the settings all the way up so we can really hear what's going on. So I'll turn the threshold down, ratio up, and the makeup gain just to compensate for the level difference. So notice how we're nearly achieving 18 dB of gain reduction, yet it doesn't sound too compressed. It's quite a natural sound. I've got another audio example here, this time a vocal. Again, it's got some slight processing on it, a little bit of reverb. Let's have a listen. In particular, notice how certain words are louder than others. Went too far and we lost our head somewhere. It's hopeless and broken. Running away, don't you fall. Now I'll turn on the optical compressor and hopefully tame those words that overshoot. It's hopeless and broken. Running away, don't you fall. Went too far and we lost our head somewhere. It's hopeless and broken. Running away, don't you fall. So again, it's smoothing the dynamic range. Now I'll turn it up so we can really hear it. So let's turn the threshold down, ratio up, and gain up to compensate. It's hopeless and broken, running away, don't you fall. Went too far and we lost our head. So now Somewhere. we're achieving a lot of compression, nearly 18 dBs worth of gain reduction here. But again, like the acoustic guitar, it still sounds quite natural. And we're really able to level out the dynamics of this vocal loop. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how an optical compressor works and where it might be useful in your own mixing. Next time you're mixing on a quantum console, don't forget to check out the mustard compressors before booting up your plug-in rack. Keep an eye out for more videos in this series about other quantum processing options.